cream kick you in the nuts. Welcome, everyone, to the completely unnecessary podcast for Tuesday, September 8th, post Labor Day, 2020, alongside friendly Ian Ferguson. I'm real friendly. Um, curmudgeon Pat Contry. Today in the show, we're talking about Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, <laughs> the Super Mario Direct for the 35th anniversary. EA shenanigans, it's been far too long. Q&A, Patreon poll, whatever else comes up we want to talk about. Uh, first, we got we got wares at ultimatenintendo.com. We got the limited t-shirt. We got the not for resale Blu-ray back in stock. We got the p- enamel pins, the array of pins going on. And you can order the guidebooks. Or if you're in Europe, you can go to pukapukagames.co.uk and order Super Nintendo books in the European theater. I like saying that the European theater, like it's a war game there. And check out the new Flea Market Madness if you have it. It's still up there. It's doing well. Just want to give it a boost there. Um, Ian, how was your uh, your Labor Day weekend? Did you labor during the Labor Day weekend? I, labored I, a little I bit. did labor during the Labor Day weekend. And uh, Is that what it's for? Are you supposed to work more Labor Day Yeah, weekend? that's exactly what it's for. Uh, it was dumb. It was dumb because STG&E is dumb. Um, our local power... Uh, company in San Diego. Uh, our power shut off at Luna uh, four times on Saturday. Um, it just went off and then right back on, but still that was really annoying. Uh, kept us from doing anything really on the computers that would you know require accurate numbers. Um, and then Sunday, the power went off at 1.30 and we left. We just, it was too fucking hot. We closed and went home at like 2.30, 2.45. Power didn't come back on until 6. So it oh, was, wow. uh, it was dumb. It was dumb. It was and, and they do that because they, they, they prevent from fucking things catching on fire, basically, because it's too hot. Everyone's using it. The fucking lines and grids can fucking burn up because California's on fire right now because it's another hot freaking summer more than usual. Uh, last year wasn't as bad as this. Two years ago was bad. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully it cools down because like, there's so many freaking um, uh, fires going on. The gender reveal party in San Bernardino, someone started. And, Frank, and so Frank told me, or someone, did you tell me about Frank that was two years ago? I told you, thing. two years ago. In 2018, same thing happened. Yeah, uh, 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 another fucking gender reveal party. Stop being so fucking lame, people. No like, one cares about No them. one gives and two it's really, shit. And it, it's, dumb dumb as it's a sex reveal party, but you don't want yes. to call it, it sound as good. But no one gives a shit about the sex of your fucking kid. Yeah. No one fucking cares. Just, just call people on the phone and say, hey, it's going to be a boy. That's fine. Good enough. Or or have potluck. Have a few people come over, wear your mask, and, and then fucking eat some food and have a cake. Just do the cake thing. Do the cake thing with a blue colored inside of it. It's going to be a fucking boy or whatever the fuck. Like that. Don't throw. You don't need fireworks and pyrotechnics. No, no as people put it, celebrating the fucking genitals uh, on your kid is a goddamn weird thing to is, do. This in wasn't the a first thing place. in other generations, was it? No, this no, is, we, this is a no, millennial we, thing. We did not do this until like this, this is a, this this is a is millennial like five thing. Five years ago. Fucking millennials. All right. I'm a millennial. You're a borderline millennial. I'm, I'm still a millennial. I'm, I'm, a, I'm in between. I'm, I'm the don't, ex-lennial. Don't, don't be a fucking old person who says millennial. It, I know. But uh, but no, you can criticize your own generation. Well, yes, yes. It is a millennial thing. It's I the avocado say. toast thing. It's along that line where it's fucking dumb. Just like... I made really good avocado tests the other day. I guess, I guess the moral is... Okay. I guess the moral is... It was don't, an accident. Don't do any shit to start a forest fire. How about that? Anything that could... Re- during during uh, climate change and, and no rain for fucking months and heat wave and, and temperature records, don't do anything that could burn up a fucking thousand acres. How about that? That's reasonable. Don't yeah. burn up a thousand acres. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It's not like it comes back uh, quickly. Burn uh, up a forest. I, I read someone's. Someone made a tweet that was funny, but it was just like crashing a tanker full of pink oil into the coral reef to celebrate yeah. The, 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 yeah. <laughs> the sex of my child. Like enough. Fuck? Fuck enough. No of one it. cares. Enough. I mean, it's insane. It's but, also selfish and self fucking serving. Well, they're going to go to either prison and or get fined because yes, that's, I hope so. Um, the, the people need to be, be be made an example of. Frank was telling me a story about there was one huge fire that happened within the past ten years. It was a hunter that lost his way, so he set off. Um, I guess a, like a road flare he had on the ground and burnt up a whole fucking forest. This hasn't come back yet, so he's still in, he's still in prison. Um, for that, um, I it. I just, the, not to go on a tangent, I have less and less faith in humanity every single year. Like, it's just, my confidence just erodes by the week. 
and it's just so I fucking respect for humanity. Like, I'm I'm humiliated <laughs> yes. to be a human being. We'll just put that one. I'm ashamed. I'll say that. Not not ashamed to be be a certain nationality. I'm ashamed in general to be a human. I think I think I don't think I don't think uh, tigers are ashamed to be tigers. They're, they're, they do their thing and they don't fucking fuck up anything too badly. I'm ashamed now. Sorry. What was I talking about? Okay. So you were talking about uh, uh, old uh, cousin birthday. Video. Oh yeah. Okay. So my cousin, my cousin Danny, who I ran into, or I hadn't seen him in years, and then I ran to him at Magfest one year, and he goes, "Hey, I think you're my cousin." I hadn't seen him in like. 15 years so i'm like trying to size him up I'm like oh yeah i think you're my cousin i recognize the face and the head shape you know and, and the general size and um so i've seen him at a few different conventions uh one in jersey i saw him at the magfest one by the way i think they, they officially canceled magfest for i guess the the few months it's already gonna be four months away they canceled it i can't um, believe they were they were about they it. were even thinking about it at this point they were like running a uh like a a, a, a a, a poll or something like that. I mean, I realize that people, what kind of poll did they that, run? That, Should we like, open? It was like, a, yeah, it was like a discussion thing, and it's like, it's up to you. I realize people want to like have conventions, but let's not. Well, they had this. one this year. Let's not force this. They like, had one this year, yeah. you know. Um. Oh, sp speaking of, speaking of Max, this is right out of the corner. Uh, congratulations on the wedding to our pals Daniel and Alex. Ah, right yes, there. yes. Uh, since they live right in the vicinity, not too far away. Mazel tov. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the uh, the cat bowl. I got you. The, the cute little cat bowl shape with the ears glass. And, nice. And their cat Zelda loves it. Anyway, um, so what was I saying? Oh, the bird. Is, okay, so we we text every now and then on Facebook. My cousin Danny. My cousins on my mom's side are not close at all. Like I'd ask him. Oh, you know, I don't even know how many kids his sister. He has two sisters. I don't know how many kids they have. Like that's how unclose we are on that one side. I don't know if you if you're if you're that unclose to your cousins like that, but there's like twelve of us. No, actually, I kind of um, regret like because I, I I was close to a, a handful of my cousins. And I still talk to them every once in a while, but we've we've drifted a, apart a little bit. Four. But um, no, I actually like my cousins. I enjoyed hanging out with my cousins. I just yeah, we all moved all over the freaking country, so I don't see them anymore. There's twelve of us on the side because my because my mom. It's about how many are on my because uh... there was five. My my mom had two sisters and twin brothers, so. Um, so we don't know about each other. We don't get together. We don't talk. It's weird. Then again, my mom doesn't talk. Holy to shit, her. There's 16. I have 16 cousins Holy on my shit. mom's side of the family. That's a lot of, that's yeah. a lot of screwing going on <laughs> there. Oh, that's a lot I, of kids. Too. It's funny because I just thought about it. I thought about it. This is how I guess generation generationally it changed. So every every sibling, my mom, the first five, had at least two kids each. There's 12 of us now, and half of us don't have any kids at all. So you really see how things have changed in like 30, oh, yeah. 30 years, generationally, 30, 40 years, how it's like me and my sister don't have kids. And then two, uh, let's see, the one brother doesn't have kids. And then the other boys don't have any kids. I'm just thinking like, wow, it's just really changed. Uh, anyway, um, so he sends me the video of this birthday, which is from like November 91, um, that, that my uncle his father took this vhs camcorder pretty good quality must have never been really watched i digitized it it's like eight and a half minutes and um it was just interesting because it, it, it was the first time i saw a video of of us being that young and i show up in in the video for two and a half seconds in the um in the um the, there's like the little children's den rec room and what am i what do you think i'm doing in that video ian just give you a guess playing uh nintendo i'm playing nintendo and it's it's interesting because I can almost identify the game because they had snake rattle and roll I know they had that for a fact so it wasn't Super Mario 3 but I know they had that and but I was told by Danny oh we also had big nose the caveman I was like how the hell did you have that game <laughs> so oh one of the friends gave it to us I was probably thinking it wasn't that good what is clicking on here what's going I don't know but when you I think you're kicking a cord or something okay there you go so um anyway so I'm playing Nintendo Chubby, thick, but quick. I was really chubby. Chubby than I thought when I was 11. Thick, maybe not quite so quick. I was always quick. Oh, okay. But I was thicker than I was quicker. We'll just say at that point. Thicker time. than quicker. Gotcha. And um, it was just interesting to see myself there. I was wearing my cute little Mets hat. I'll put a little still on the top here. Now I have to. People are like, what does Pat look like when he's, you know, what, huge when he was 11, but playing Little League, wearing my husky pants. Uh, do you ever go back? Ever you ever have it like a video of you when you were a kid? You go back and watch or anything like that? No, there are very few pictures of me from when I was um, a kid. Like pictures of me, there are some of me like up until maybe like five years old, and then there are like no pictures of me from like the age of 
like I, there's like no pictures of me through my teen years I really think I, yeah like there, there's just not many around and then pictures of me start to show up again in my early 20s and then pink uh, hair to you at that point uh there, there's some Red colored hair. hair there and then uh yeah I, I think the only reason pictures exist to me now is because of phones I, I was very good well, at... Well, now we take too many pictures. Yes, I was very good at avoiding cameras for most of my life. Yeah, I, I, looking... I don't... We, we don't get pictures, like, printed anymore, or, or there's no more, you know, uh, photo albums, unfortunately, unless you, like, make them on iTunes, the digital ones. Now we take too many pictures where they don't mean anything. They used to mean something, specifically, and now they're like, well, we take a thousand every other day, so now they don't individually mean anything anymore. So that's an interesting cultural sort of sociological question to ask about that the value of like saving memories how that's changed anyway end up having kids because no one has kids anymore uh birth rates down anyway um so i want to bring up this topic because this is this is annoying and this is on my trend of not caring about wrestling because i tell you every few years i stop watching wrestling now i'm like kind of out of wrestling again and I think COVID helped. I'm so out of it. I don't know that I'm ever going to go back. That's how you out always of come it back. I, it's we'll like Godfather see. Three. You'll come back. We'll see. You'll, you'll come back. Um, but I think I think the thing with what happened with COVID was like, okay, now the illusion's gone because now there's no audience, so now it's like real world. Like it's hard to pretend it's like what it's supposed to be doing, like pretending to be a sports event. You know, it's too it it, it ble- the real life bled into the sure. fun reality, if that makes sense, at least for me. Um, so that was part of it. And plus, I'm just sick of the bullshit and, and, and it's more WWE. AEW is doing fine from what I, from what I hear. I, I, I haven't, I, I catch little bits and pieces of that, but WWE is just, I'm fucking over it and I'm done with it. And this story is one of the reasons why, because it's run, it's run like a fucking carny circus still with Vince McMahon at the top. And I'm just fucking sick of it. Like, I, 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 want, I, honestly I, I want him to fall into a vat of beans uh, and never reemerge. Like, yes, yeah, like, that's how I want him to the, go out. The, the bushes make beans, Ooh, McMahon yeah. stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, ah, he died. I'll, eat, I'll eat my way out. He died in the beans. Uh, I, anyway. I, I honestly don't think I want to watch again until he's not in charge anymore. I think I, I'm almost going to draw that line where once he's officially gone, I will start watching. I again. said that when the Saudi Arabia stuff went down and I've right. stuck to it. Oh, good. Good for you. I, I, well, other than... Oh. We were paid to do that one with WrestleMania. I think that was post Saudi Arabia, but that, I think that's the only wrestling I've watched. We were paid to do WrestleMania. We, well, we had to do that ad. Remember, we had to do the WrestleMania ad for. Uh... Yeah, we did a WrestleMania ad. No, we the the wrestling game. We we did that. We watched WrestleMania and we talked about WrestleMania and we did we did the ad for the wrestling game. Oh, we did for oh to, to, to promote yes. the uh, okay. To promote I'm not the, fucking crazy. To promote the crazy arc, we did. We were paid for that. I don't remember that now. Was that that was like a year and a half ago? Anyways, that yeah, that's the only right. wrestling I've watched. The only WWE I've watched since the Saudi Arabia shit was that. I don't remember that at all. Are you sure we were sponsored yes. for that? Yes, we were sponsored for that. You're, are you confusing that with Retromania Wrestling? That's what I'm saying. We were sponsored to oh, watch oh, Wrestlemania. That was like three years ago. Okay, then that was no, prior to Saudi ago. Arabia. Okay. Oh, <laughs> anyway. I, thought you said, I was thinking we, you said we were, we were sponsored for that crazy one you, you, or you fucking fight alligators or something. That's what oh. I was thinking of. No. Retromania Wrestling, a fine wrestling game yes, coming out on fine wrestling theme. game. No, that's fine. Go go support Retromania Wrestling. I, I mean, you made it seem like WWE paid us. I was like, what are you talking about? No. <laughs> yes, because we were going to cover WrestleMania anyway. We, yes. we, we cover WrestleMania almost every year. This year, we kind of like... Uh, I did not. We, we kind of... Yeah. We did not. Yeah. The Rumble the Rumble still kind of draws me back to see the surprise of who shows up. That's past their prime. And that's out. actually... And that uh, was it was like the first... I, yeah, I haven't even watched the Rumbles. Man. I, th- I think I caught the Rumble this year, but I don't remember a thing that happened. Um, okay. So this, this was shitty, but they clarified. WWE told their wrestlers they had 30 days to stop basically using third-party platforms like Cameo, YouTube, and Twitch because it, they were, you know, using uh, likeness and their names. And at first, people were like, what the fuck? What's going on here? Uh, they've clarified it now because at first it was insane because you could not enforce it. You cannot enforce someone to go off and do like cameo videos say hey you know I, I guess their fear at the time was that they didn't want people to use their wrestling names but that's not originally what came out originally it was like you can't use these third party platforms right you're making money off of like i guess working for wwe even though again they are technically independent contractors that's how wwe classifies them so they don't have to you know uh, p- pay them health insurance why or, is there no law against that like it's just they're not there's gotta be a class action shoot, suit they probably would win but they have to all team up to do it you know, they would have it's to, insane. Or the state would have to, you know, file a lawsuit. The state 
level, but they have probably so much pull in Connecticut that they wouldn't do that, or like in Florida. So originally, okay. So originally, that's what they said. Then they come back and said, um, "It is it is the control and exploitation of these characters that allows WWE to drive revenue, which in turn enables the company to compensate performers at the highest level in the sports entertainment industry. Notwithstanding the contractual language, it is imperative for the success of our company to protect our greatest assets and establish partnerships with third parties on a company company wide basis, rather than at the individual level, which as as a result will provide more value." For more involved, for all involved, the talent was talent was previously informed through a letter penned by WWE Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon that they would have 30 days to stop using third-party platforms. The letter allegedly stated, "Some of you are engaged with outside third parties using your name and likeness in ways that are detrimental to our company. It is imperative that these activities be terminated within the next 30 days. Continued violations will result in fine, suspension, or termination at WWE's discretion." God, I hate him. So I think. They see that it's a control thing because with ca- with cameo cameo dot com slash pat country with um, Twitch obviously obviously with podcasts a lot of wrestlers doing podcasts now that people will come just to see their favorite personalities talk about or just fucking play video games yeah it's not because of WWE banner now if they are using the WWE name that's trademarked yes that would be a problem. That that would be that would be W's right to go after him for that. But a, a lot of these wrestlers aren't doing that. They're just they're just using their own name. That's why if I ever became a wrestler, I'd have my druthers to use my own trademark name because I can always control it. But a lot of wrestlers can't do that. If you're like AJ Styles or Samoa Joe, you come from 15 years before, and then yeah. But a lot of these wrestlers coming up the ranks, they give you a name that W owns it, unfortunately. Right. But you cannot prevent an independent <clears throat> contractor from using another platform that has nothing to do with with WWE, like. Like that would like if 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 I got fired by WWE, I would I would sue him and be like no. Then hopefully other other wrestlers around would have the balls to join the lawsuits. You can't prevent me from doing a shout out on a cameo. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's fucking insane to do that. Yeah, it's insane. Especially since they probably realize oh we I can make you know a thousand dollars a day doing shout outs if I'm like Alexa Bliss or whatever. Yeah, you know? from what I hear, they're not cheap. The shout outs. And, and I mean, that's fine. No, like, that, make your money. market. Yeah, yeah, do it. Make your money. It's like a five, it's like an autograph session meet and greet, basically. You know, a little minute, little minute or whatever. Hey, what's going on? Um, anyway, so, so when I, when I say stuff like this, I don't want to watch wrestling because it's, it, it's how it's run is disgusting still. I just don't. No, that's yeah. a large part of why I don't watch it. <sighs> it's nuts. From, from, from what I hear and what I see, AEW's run better. They run it more like, you know, they, they provide you know the, the more help and it's not this bullshit independent contact tractor thing they try to get away with so they don't have to reimburse their talent or you know insurance crap and things like that so all right well that that's all i want to bring up cobra kai ian i force you to watch cobra kai cobra kai is the sequel series to the karate kid uh uh trilogy if you don't count the next karate kid which that's not really in this or or the remake with will smith's son and Jackie Chan, which is not really karate, it's kung fu, so I don't understand why they called it that anyway. Um, sorry, that movie. It wasn't a bad movie, but it had, it wasn't karate. Anyway, so um, Cobra Kai is sweeping the nation right now. It's like number one show on Netflix, and um, it was weird, weird because the show was, came out two years ago, and no one watched because it was, it was like one of the only shows on YouTube Red or YouTube Premium, whatever it's called now, that wasn't like a stupid like youtuber doing a trying to do like a series that no one cares about it was like a real show that should have been on netflix yeah or somewhere i remember else. you talking about it being good and i remember uh adam uh square painter talking about it being good and some other people and I, I it's hard to get me to sit down and watch tv in the first place i'm not going to go out of my way to get a youtube subscription to um, oh, I never did. It was watch t- it. They, put, they had the two first two episodes free, which is like each episode is like a half hour, so it's perfect. So yeah, the first hour it kind of gets you into it. There was like a cliffhanger, and then um, I was like, I'm not paying for YouTube Red to see the rest of this. So so they did the first two seasons. It was uh, let's see, it was 2018 and 19 on YouTube Premium, and then thankfully Netflix picked them up, and also I think they funded the third season, which is going to come out next year. They already shot it, thankfully, but they're going to hold it for next year, um, and. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I hate this expression that is, it's better than it has any right to be, but that's what everyone's saying. Because like, well, you don't expect a show based upon the Karate Kid 
f fucking 35 years later after the movie came out to be worth a damn but it's really uh, impressive. No, especially because um, I don't hold like I don't. I, so I watched the first five episodes, um, and I and, and I won't. I won't. I'm not gonna for people who are experiencing it for the first time. I won't spoil much. But basically, um, da uh, Danny. It, 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 I think the end of the fifth episode is Danny putting the the headband back on. At the one his that, home. that Mr. Miyagi gave him. Yeah. Um, he decides to go back to his old karate ways. Yeah. Just, um, the first 10 minutes of the first episode, I was like, this is dumb. The second 10 minutes, I was like, all right, it's a little bit better. But then it ends kind of like, it, 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 it almost seems like by the end of the first episode, it makes peace with the fact that it's going to have to be a little goofy. Yes. And, um, I'm trying to remember the end of the first episode, but yes. Um, you know, and, and I, that's actually something that I think happens more a little bit more with as the first few episodes progress um and by by the time it, it, it hit the fourth episode I, I was into it but it seems like it's kind of feeling out whether it wants to be serious or goofy or it, it doesn't I, I don't feel like it knew exactly what it wanted to be in in, in, in its first hour um but it, it is very good um it's compelling uh, Vani, I think, is actually maybe even enjoying it a little bit more than I was. We had watched three episodes of Castlevania, and then we had watched four episodes of Cobra Kai. That's a lot of fucking TV. That's all half-hour stuff. And then she was like, I could watch one more. And I was like, all right, fine, we'll watch one more, and then I'm, I'm going to bed. So it, it, it definitely does have um, that popcorn-y, binge-y, quality to it yeah because again they're like the half hour episodes they're not a full hour so it's like wow so the first the first season is like a two and a half hour movie basically and so is the second one they're only 10 episodes and um what, what's amazing about it well it, it it starts with you know the anti if you don't know the 10 episodes would be five hours pat math is off five yeah. hours yeah <laughs> 10 episodes is why, about five hours. It was, it was five episodes between two and every. I was thinking about you did five. That's yeah, I did five. My brain is fuzzy this morning. I had weird dreams where a guy was in my backyard in a gorilla costume. It was really weird. Anyway, so so it, it's uh, it's, it, it's Johnny, who was the blonde-haired, blue-eyed you know, villain of the first movie. The, the quintessential asshole high school bully character. And he, he did that in a couple of movies, right? Mm -hmm. um, William Zabka. Is the actor he was also in um the equalizer i believe he was like the son on the equalizer that's all i knew him from um so he's the main character slash half character along with daniel larusso um ralph macho comes back so it's really like half and half that the more you watch the more it becomes a half and half right yeah, uh, yeah. split the, down the middle the first episode is very much johnny is very much johnny and it's interesting because it it, it almost frames Danny is the bad guy. Sure. Um, but by this, but the second episode goes into Danny a little bit more. It makes him a bit more sympathetic. Um, what, what, what's interesting, I think, about the show, the the thought that I walked away with last night was, is it's with the exception of like a couple of the kids, and not all of them. Um, it is a show that tells an interesting story with a bunch of characters that are all in various ways very unlikable. Yes. Absolutely, and you'll see that more with. I won't give it away. What happens in season two? Um, there's one character that's in season one that radically changes for se season two. One of the kids, and you're like, "Holy shit!" You know, the show went there. There's so so. Not to get into a lot of the themes, but there's a lot of themes about um, social class. Uh, it, it plays a huge part of it, and it's interesting because it reverses from the first film. So in the first film, um, uh, Ralph Macchio's character is poor. He's from Jersey. They come from Newark, New Jersey, or Elizabeth, around there. They're poor, working class, and then Johnny's rich. He's like the rich kid. So that's upended uh, in this series. It's uh, it's upended, right? Entirely. Uh, now um, Johnny's hard as luck. You know, he, he's, he's trying to put up drywall and, and put a TV up. Yeah. And he's tr trying to get by. He's just, he's drinking, he's drinking beers left and right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the little, little Coors bottles. That's mm -hmm. his thing. Yeah, the little banquet bottles. <laughs> do they still make those? Yeah, they do. My grandfather used to drink um, uh, little bottles, but it wasn't that. Oh, God, now I can't remember the name. I think you're thinking pony bottles, like the little uh, splits, the seven ounce bottles. Is that what they are? Yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, But now... 
they have you know uh, Ralph Macchio now in this series is he's like the big man now he owns these dealerships he's the big car guy he's famous now so it's it's and he has the big house he has the family right. he's now the upper class and so it, it's really interesting how it goes from there and at first yeah like like uh Danny's pr- uh, portrayed as you know he's a uh, he he's portrayed as as the asshole and then it's sort of um it, it evens out. You see that neither yes. of these characters are perfect. They have good and bad uh, qualities to them, which I was not expecting it to, to go that route. I think, okay, they're going to st- stick with Johnny being the main protagonist. Then, no, it's 50 50. And now they both have, you know, of course you have the, the tropes of, and it, it's more in season two how the coincident bullshit. Oh, they both happen to show up at the same restaurant together. And then it happens with the kids a lot. Oh, you know, we run into them at the party. And it's like, I understand that's how you write these things, but it happens a little bit too much. But that's um that's all the only complaint I have. The fight scenes are choreographed well. Um, they they more realistically they don't try to like teach like Johnny's character is set in his ways obviously from the eighties. He's more like politically incorrect. You know he's making fun of the kid for having his um you know peanut um allergies. It's not real. But they don't shame the character for that. But they also don't say it's right that he's so they just leave it there. That's how he is. He's right. a good guy. We'll just leave it there, and and the kids try to. It's funny because the kids try to correct them, but they know it's like a lost cause. But he's but he still cares about the kids. That eventually, as you see, so it's it's really endearing uh, redemption to this character. That's one of the most hated villains in in movie history, and you see things from his perspective about no, wow, Danny was an asshole. Like when you go back and watch those movies, and th- there's a part in season two when he retells. What happened? Or maybe at the end of season one, he retells events from his point of view. It's like, yeah, then this old guy beat the shit out of all of us and he t- when, when Mr. Miyagi came in and helped uh, Dan- save Daniel after the Halloween thing. Right. And from his perspective, yeah, this old guy came and fucking fucked us up. Right. And, like, really hurt us badly. It's like, oh, I could see that, even though you were wrong for beating up, trying to beat up, uh, you know, Daniel there. Um, it's just very interesting. And I wish you had seen all of season two because I, I have a feeling you're gonna go back and watch it with Vani because there's major things that happen in season two. And you're like, holy shit! Like I can't believe they went there, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone. So no, well, we'll see. I'll spoil this though. It, it does build up to the the All Valley, um, you know, event at the end, the tournament at the end of season one. I mean, you see that coming though. That's what it's going to be. Oh sure, I kind of figured that's what was going to happen. But it's interesting to see how it progresses and how the characters change. Even even the uh, even the high school kids, even the ones that start up nice, some of them turn into assholes, and vice versa. So it's really interesting. You see the effect of the of the dojo and things like that. So check it out, Ian Cobra Kai. Ninety four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's it's uh, it's it's sweeping the nation. Um. So just in uh, amusing news, um, people always talk about Doom running on um everything. Uh, amusing Twitter haver uh, Foon um, F O O N E. Um, they do a lot of um, tweets about tech, old computers, things like that. The programmer likes to reverse engineer things, according to his Mashable article. Interesting hardware, all that kind of stuff. Um, they uh, over the weekend um, had been screwing around with a pregnancy test that had uh, an LCD display on it. And at, at one point replaced it, they replaced it with, I'm not exactly sure. I think it, they said it was a one, it is a 128 by 32 pixel monochrome display <laughs> that fits inside the pregnancy <laughs> test. Um, and they were just uh. like, they were, they were joking and running and, uh, you know, uh, amusing videos on it. And at one point they made the joke about, you know, playing doom on the pregnancy test and they had played back a video of doom being played on it. Well, they actually went a step further. Um, and it required putting, uh, you know, uh, it's got, uh, basically they put the screen in there and then wires coming out of the pregnancy test onto a smaller computer uh that that you know a different micro uh Processor. cpu that's C- that wasn't in there uh, so it's cheating that this or cheating it, cheating but it. still yeah. uh then got a uh, visual of um them um playing uh doom on it actually playing doom on it using a wireless keyboard and it, it's funny because <laughs> well, the display is cute though because it's like little dot white dots yeah it's 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 yeah but it's playing like yeah. that's the first stage it's amusing but it's definitely the first stage it's yes. un- and it's funny because it's unmistakably the first stage like yes. that that is so burning fires my... a pistol at the two at the two uh yeah 
the two guys. Yeah, it's, and it, you see the flash of mm -hmm. the gun. Yeah, because at first you're like, what is that? Oh, there's the gun flash. Okay, so it yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I would actually suggest following them on Twitter. They're like I said, their their Twitter is always amusing. They go on deep dives um, about a lot of that stuff. They also do a lot of like uh, they do like uh, funny AliExpress um threads on they're, like the weird sex find weird, toys weird and bullshit. shit that you can find on that'd there be a, that'd be a fun thing to see i mean there's probably tons of stuff there yeah. that you would never dream of so yeah definitely someone i enjoy following but yeah it was it was funny to see this um they also had uh I, I, what i thought was funny they had the stupid little dancing baby dancing on the pregnancy test the fucking ellie McDeal oh, the baby little... yeah okay and, wow that's like 20 years old already yeah so, holy shit um anyways amusing stuff um Ian, yeah. Xbox and Series S, not Series X. How you love that? Xbox Series S was was first. It was leaked that this was going to be a two hundred ninety nine dollar console. This is the next gen, and now it was. Uh, they were forced to confirm it officially. Uh, Microsoft, it's like, yeah, it's real. Uh, Xbox Series S. It's the tiny digital only version of the next generation of Xbox. It's only going to cost. Two hundred and ninety-nine dollars. They said, "Let's make it official with the eye emoji," because they know that it got leaked. Yeah, so it's two ninety-nine. Um, two ninety-nine out of that out of their mind. Two ninety-nine, and I believe it's coming bundled with Game Pass. I don't know how much, how long, how much Game Pass for how long. Um, let's see, maybe a free month or so. According to reports about the Series X, blah blah blah. blah, blah. Series S and Series X will be available on November 10th, so that's what they're saying. Uh, the Series Jesus. S will likely be offered as part of a $25 per month Xbox All Access financing option, um, making it more attractive from global markets. Blah, 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 financing? Blah. Like it's a car? You pay 25 bucks a month? Yeah. Uh, Is that, I, did they ever do that before? Um, yes, they did. There is an Take X, out a loan? There was an Xbox One that you could finance. I'm pretty sure it was also a digital only. How much more did the finance? Like 50 bucks or 100 probably? Or is yeah, it no idea. Um, did they repo your Xbox? <laughs> well, I can't Sorry. find anything about it being bundled with Game Pass, so okay. maybe I'm wrong. That's but, what we're thinking, though, maybe. But anyways... I, I have to admit, uh, as much as I hate the name, um, 300 bucks, um, and even if Game Pass is not bundled, 300 bucks digital only, you put Game Pass on this. Um, it's a fairly attractive package. Um, we know better packages here. And we sure do. Manscaped.com. Manscaped, yeah, Manscaped.com. He's close to your podcast. Zoom, zoom. Um, I... Uh, I am not necessarily. I am. It doesn't do anything to convince me that I need an Xbox or really that I need any next generation system right away. Not no, not but, for but, first but, year probably. But especially the Microsoft ones because they keep talking about how there's going to be no exclusives, you know, right away. Um, but I do think if if you are look, it is an attractive price point for it if you are comfortable being digital only. Um, I have more interest in the PlayStation Five. But it's going to be really interesting to see how they fire back on this. Sure. Um, they are doing... Uh, now, we do know that PlayStation 5 is doing a digital-only model as well. Uh, when they announced the uh, PlayStation 5 and they showed the form factor of it and all that, they did announce that there's going to be a digital-only model and a t uh, traditional disc-based model. So it'll be interesting to see if Sony tries to bring their digital-only model into this price point range. Sure. So let's just go over it real quick. Like, this is... is this is going to be not the same horsepower as the Series X. It's going to be it's going to be like the mid midway point. Right. So it's not going to be a uh, full 4K resolution. It'll be 1440p up to 120 frames per second. So for most people, that'll be fine, especially if you don't have a 4K TV. Like who cares? Five to 1080p TV. That's fine. That that that'll be fine. Um, they'll have the ray tracing, uh, variable rate shading, variable refresh rate. Games will be upscaled to 4K, so even if you have a 4K TV, they'll be at least be upscaled. And 4K media playback is confirmed. One major downgrade is the solid state drive. It'll only be uh, half a terabyte, 512 gigs. That's it. Um, so you're not getting the, f the whole kit and caboodle, but for a lot of people, this might be fine just to do this. Yeah. I, yeah. Because like the other one might be $500 or more or $600. So right. this is the budget option, which might satisfy people. It's like, yeah, well, there's no, there's no drive. There's no, I mean, th this day and age, you're going to have it going forward. You're going to have the, the digital only versions. Go That's the way the reality is going to be going forward. 
I don't think you're going to get rid of it entirely, but you're going to have your cheaper version. Yeah, and like I said, I you know when we talked about the PlayStation Five, I enjoy physical media for certain things. I like to collect records. I will always you know keep around my PC Engine stuff. My Game Boy cartridges are small, um, and I like to buy like the physical stuff for Switch when I can. But on um, for whatever reason, like for PlayStation Four, um, I, I every almost every I. I went almost completely digital with that system. I know that there's a lot of people who listen to this who will be, especially like friends of ours who work in physical media, who put out physical media, um, but it's not always the biggest deal for me. Um, so yeah, this is kind of attractive, but like I said, I need to see what, what Sony fires back with. Um, I, I, the one thing they're not sure about if it's going to be exp- be able to expand it with your own hard drive. The Series X, it says there's a custom port, you can do that. They're not sure in the Series okay, S yet. If you, if you can't, then that's kind of a killer. Sure, because a lot of these games are hundreds of gigs. Right. Yeah. We're getting... We're getting the, when, when they released the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, 500 gigabytes even then was like... Unless there's like a smart- we were getting a little weird. I mean that that was that was that was tight. I mean stuff like Doom was coming out at 80 gigabytes, and we're like, uh, unless it's like a system where you have two games fully installed at one time, then you got to delete it and install the other one. Right. Which which, which I which some people that's probably how they game anyway. To be honest, they're going to play the one game, complete it, sure, play another game, and then unless there's just also a smart feature where maybe if you expand it with a regular hard drive. You know, a, sp- a old spinner hard drive where the, it's smart enough to know. Okay, this is the you know this is the stuff that needs to be loaded on the solid state. We'll put that. There. You know what I mean? Partition right. it out. Maybe. I, I mean, I, I don't know if they do that with current programs or not. I don't know. Uh, but either way, when I see this, I what I think of. Well, this the Xbox is selling like a cheap little little computer. That's well, how I kind of look at this. It's a three hundred dollar little computer that's focused on gaming. That if I don't want to spend a fucking eight hundred dollars on a new graphics card i'll spend 300 dollars on the xbox sure right and i can still play like the same games yeah we'll see how quickly it starts to lag behind on some things but i i I have a feeling that this is going to be a generation where they are still going to be developing mostly for the the lowest common denominator in their in their library because this is like you know the steam machines never really caught on right this is like this is like a souped up steam to me a steam machine but you're it's Xbox. You could also play, you know, play Windows 10 software that would be on there going back and forth with, you know. So, yeah, I'm like, this is a big deal. I just think it's a, it's a bigger deal that right now than what people might think. Yeah, I don't think, um, I don't, I don't think the price it's, point. I, I think the price point is great, but I think the, like I said, I think, I think the, um, dulled down features um i don't think it's the coup that maybe you think it is but i do think it's a i I don't think it's a bad thing well it's a coup if the cheapest playstation is going to be five hundred dollars or six hundred dollars then it's like okay now i understand playstation is going to actually have exclusives planned for next year you know but that that, 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 that's where like if, if, if if we assume that everything is going to have an equal amount of good stuff to play then yes this is a coup but at it if if there's if if there's nothing to play on it that is exclusive, I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal. Oh, I, okay. You don't, you don't think even but, three hundred hours less at all? Okay. But, but you are. I mean, you are correct in a way. I mean, that is how Microsoft got the edge in what was that generation seven? I mean, Sony came out and was like six hundred dollars, and then flexed down like it was like people were going to drop the six hundred like it was no problem. And Microsoft had the Xbox three hundred and sixty at. 300 or 350 and for the that first half of that generation the playstation 3 may may as well have not existed sure it wasn't until it had received multiple price cuts that people even yeah. started paying attention to the ps3 so okay well there you go so this 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 holiday season you can get a switch for 300 and now the xbox series s or the galaxy purple amico at 300 dollars. so it's your choice how you how you want to game for 300 dollars. what what sort of value do you want to get out of this it's 250 Oh no, the Galaxy Purple, Galaxy Purple is, is three hundred. Yeah, yeah. Between two and three hundred dollars, Ian. 